Hey guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's tutorial, we're going to be creating a road in Revit. So I get this question quite often, uh, how do we create roads in Revit? Unfortunately, there isn't a tool that allows you to place a road on your topography. So that's why I decided to create this video where I'm going to be showing you, uh, in my opinion, the, the best approach to creating roads in Revit, roads that kind of perfectly follow the topography, and they're actually going to be floors that are kind of uh, designed to follow the, the topography uh, on which they are, uh, well, hosted, I guess you can say. Uh, so that's going to be the topic of uh, today's video. Uh, now, before we get into that, uh, if you're interested in the site design, if you're interested in landscape architecture through Revit, I actually have a site design and coordination course for Revit. Uh, it's a course, it's uh, over 10 hours long. I'm going to link it up in the description just below this video and also in the cards above. Uh, it's a really good course course if you want to kind of, uh, master uh, site design and coordination Revit, I'd like to encourage you to check it out. Uh, also as part of that course, you will get uh, an extended free trial uh, to the environment plugin. This is a plugin that's specialized for uh, landscape architecture in Revit, utilizing building information modeling uh, when it comes to landscape architecture. Uh, it has a lot of unique tools uh, and we're actually going to be exploring some of those tools a little bit later in this video. Uh, now, if you're interested in the environment plugin, I'm going to also link that up just below this video in the description and up in the card above and you can also use the discount code Balkan Architect uh, for a generous uh, discount or it's not a discount it's an extended uh, license so uh, if you get a subscription you get extra 55 days on your subscription completely for free by using the coupon code so I think that's a good deal uh, so anyways now without any further ado let's jump into Revit and let's take a look at creating roads so what you can see here is I have some simple topography here uh, and I want to host a road on this topography. Uh, so for this approach, what I like to do is go to the site plan and then the first thing you wanna do is you wanna sketch out where that road is going to be heading. So what I actually wanna do is go here to annotate, uh, go to detail line, uh, and then I can set this to wide lines, for example, and then here I can just go perhaps, perhaps like this, go all the way up to here, go down up to here, and then come to here. Hit the escape key a few times. Uh, so we have these, this is kind of the outline of our road. Then I'm going to go again to the detail line. In this case, I'm going to use the pick lines tool. And here I'm going to give it a, let's go with a six meter offset. So just like this, like that, and like this. Perfect. Hit the escape key a few times. And then you want to go to the modify tab and you want to use trim and extend to corner to fix these corners up. Uh, you want to go back to annotate, back to detail line, and just let's close these up here and here. Uh, and then also we want to use fillet arc tool with a radius of six meters for these inside arcs. Or actually, let's go with, I think we can go with 10 meters perhaps. Let's see, can we get away with that? No, we cannot. Okay, so I think if we try nine, I think that will work. So let's try that again. Yeah, this will work. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then on the outside, you just add the width of the road. So nine plus six is 15. So you just add that and you just do that on the outside, just like this. So there we go. So we have a road that kind of, it's a U-shaped road that's going to be going here. Now, obviously we cannot see any of that here uh, on the topography. So the next step is we actually wanna get the elevations alongside the edges of this road. So how do you do that? Well, you can use the elevate, the spot elevation tool to find those. So you can just zoom in here. Uh, and in this case, it's not reporting your, uh, it's, it's not very precise. It's rounding everything at, at four meters. So we can select that spot elevation, go here into edit type. Uh, here we can go into units format uh, and let's just add just a couple of decimal places here. Click okay, apply, okay. 
Uh, I know this is still four, but uh, it, it, it has that couple of zeros, so we have those decimal places. So you just wanna select this, you wanna go to copy, and basically you wanna copy it uh, as many times as you want. So basically here we have the, this position, uh, we can have this position here, here, okay, so this is all at five, and then you can go alongside this uh, kind of arc. So I like to kind of follow the same number of elevation spots on the inside and on the outside, perhaps just following this like that. And you just kind of follow that along. Now, uh, more of these that you place, more accurate it's going to be in the end. And you'll see kind of the, the end result in, uh, in a few moments. And then here we can just place a few like that perhaps here, perhaps here a couple of them. There we go, hit the escape key a few times, and there we go. So you can place these spot elevations here. I think I've placed a bit too many, so let's delete a few of these. Yeah, perhaps place it there. Perhaps we don't even need these and these. Yeah, so you don't wanna have too many because it's just going to be a, a harder job to kind of complete this. So there we go, I think this might be enough, just like that just gonna simplify this surface a little bit. And you'll see in a moment what I'm talking about. So there we go. We have uh, a few of these elevation spots, uh, our spot elevations. Okay, so now once we have marked our elevations, the next step is to go to architecture, uh, go here to floor, uh, and then you just wanna create a floor that follows this detail line. So let me switch this to 300 millimeters, use pick lines, hover over one of the lines, use the tab key just once, hit the tab key once, and then you get your uh, you get your whole outline. And then once you're done with that, you go to modify sub elements. And then here, what you want to do is you want to place uh, points wherever you have placed these uh, 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 spot elevations. So you just want to go to add point and then let's add one here here, 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 wanna add one here. Yeah, I think we can follow, yeah. Well, let's add one here as well. Here, here. Just like that, there we go. Uh, hit the escape key a few times. Now let's move these kind of a little bit closer in as you've seen where those kind of uh, positions are. So I think this one should be closer in here just like that and these should be a little bit closer in here yeah okay there we go okay so now if i just make a cross selection go to filter and then go to check none floors apply okay so now the floor is selected we can go to modify sub elements uh, and now what you can do is okay i haven't added the points here okay here and here there we go so now you just want to go to modify sub elements and you just select the elements and then you assign elevations. So for example, here I can just select this whole line and say this should be at five meters. Next, uh, this one here, this point here. Now, if you can't hit it, uh, you can just use the tab key. There we go. This should be at five. This should be at five. So you're basically reading whatever is displaying here on that uh, elevation point and you're just entering that number. So this is five this is five and then you just go like that all the way around this is 4.18 this is something similar like 4.21 and so on so you basically repeat this process for the rest of these points i'm just going to skip that to to kind of keep this short Okay, so I have now completed this, and what I can just simply do uh, is go here to modify, and we're done. So now if I go to the 3D view, that looks like this. So you can see that the road is following the surface, but it seems to be like embedded into the surface. And you can easily fix this by going to one of the elevations, just zoom in and go to the move tool and just move everything up ever so slightly. So I would like to go like 0.1 or perhaps 0.15, so that's like 15 centimeters. And now, as you can see, the road is on top of that surface. Now, in some cases, it, you are going to have issues like this, uh, but it's usually an easy fix either by uh, modifying the surface or uh, by uh, or, or, or something similar. I think we have a do we have a point here? 
no so we can just kind of either modify the surface or we can go back to the uh, to the road uh, go to modify sub elements and then we can move these elements up just a little bit so perhaps eight instead of seven here and yeah that should fix that issue and there we go that's kind of an easy way to create roads in Revit it definitely does take some time uh, and it's not a, a perfect solution uh, but it is a solution also if you don't want to see these kind of lines in the middle uh, that's an easy fix as well you just go to visibility graphics overrides scroll down to floors so once you find floors expand that menu and you find these interior edges so if you just uncheck those it's not going to display those lines as in the in the middle of the floors so there we go uh, I, I like this solution because it's easy you just use the regular Revit tools for that but uh, as I've shown you uh, uh, it is uh, a little bit uh, annoying to have to to have to do everything manually. Now, if you don't want to do everything manually, there is a quicker solution by using the environment uh, plugin. So the environment uh, plugin, as I've mentioned, that's part of my course. And if you get of course, you get extended an extended trial. Uh, usually the, the free trial is two months. Uh, if you get the course, you get five months of free trial. So extra three months added on top of that. So let me show you how that works. So here, this is the environment plugin these are all of the tools that you get as part of that uh, actually I'm going to be showing you a couple of approaches one where uh, we use a similar approach to this but instead of doing everything manually it's just a few clicks and another approach is inserting these land uh, XML uh, files uh, which is made for situations where you're working uh, with an engineer, uh, a road engineer that's working in civil 3D, and then you can just insert that data directly into Revit uh, by using this tool. But first, let me show you how to shape topography. So as you've seen uh, here, we had to uh, place all of these uh, elevations and so on uh, but actually there is a quicker solution with the environment plugin so let me show you I'm just going to make a broad selection here select all of these annotation elements go to filter uh, check none and then let's check out uh, check our spot elevations uh, and our lines there we go hit apply okay and we can just actually delete that okay let's go back to the 3d view let's select this road and now we have an option to reset shape so what that's going to do is it's just going to well reset it so now it's just completely flat here okay so now let me show you the approach using the environment plugin so you have this shape by topography tool and the shape by topography tool uh, is used in order to basically adapt your floor to the shape of the topography that it's kind of being overlaid with so uh, basically what you do you can select your floor hold the control key select your topography you go to the environment tab you go to shape by topography uh, and uh, here basically what you do is uh, here you have a, a dialogue it's going to report that you have one topo surface selected and one slab selected here you can set up the related elevation so how far up uh, or down is your floor going to be in relationship to the surface so I want it to be kind of 15 centimeters above uh, and then here we can include the, the points uh, in inside of the contour so not only on the outside of the floor but also on the inside of the floor which is really good uh, also here we can simplify that uh, the edge slope uh, if we want so kind of for less points I guess for a quicker uh, calculation time and once we're done with the settings we just click OK and then it's just going to take uh, a few moments and as you can see now that uh, floor is perfectly adapted to that surface and it looks really really good so uh, as you can see everything is fitting in perfectly and it looks much better than the first approach just because it's going to include many more points along the way whereas previously we were kind of limited with the amount of spot elevations we were uh, placing and obviously there is a lot of time savings with this uh, with this approach uh, now uh, let me just show you what to do in a situation where you're uh, inserting a land XML file so how does this basically work so let me just go here to the file menu and start just a new simple project I'm just going to use a simple uh, default metric uh, template and then uh, what you want to use here or what you want to do here is first I'm just going to insert a CAD file just for the 
in coordinates. So I'm just going to go here to insert, uh, import, uh, or link CAD. Yeah, let's go here. I'm just going to select this CAD file and uh, open that up. So that's going to bring this in. And then also let's go here to collab or to manage. Let's go to acquire coordinates and let's just acquire those coordinates. Let's see. Okay, uh, so uh, what I'm going to do next is just go here to, or let's go to the 3D view just to see what's, oops, not that file, this file, there we go. Let's go to the 3D view just to see what's going on here. So what you do now is you go to the environment tab and here we can insert the file. So as I said, this is a file from civil 3D. So if you have a civil engineer designing that road, uh, it's going to save you a lot of headache because roads in real life usually don't look like this usually the topography is a little bit adapted to that road so the road can kind of have that perfect uh, perfect uh, slope and, and so on what's important for road design I guess so what you want to do here is just go here to insert that file you specify the path here I'm just going to specify this example file uh, open that up uh, I'm going to be using the shared coordinates click on import and there we go so as you can see it's just going to import that here and this is just going to be kind of simple uh, topography and now uh, what's really good is using this uh, insert land XML uh, tool in collaboration with the shape by topography. So I can now use this CAD file that as you can see these red lines are specifying where that road is. And I can just go to architecture, I can go to the floor tool, I can use the pick lines to pick out the uh, that road and here I can just kind of close it off. See, here I see I have a, an open line. There we go, an open loop. So anyways, once you've done this, I hit finish. Now I have a road. Uh, let's make it 300 millimeters, perfect. So once we have this road, now I can simply go to the environment tab. I can go to select that, hold the control key, select the uh, this topography above, then go to shape by topography. I can specify the related elevation offset here. Uh, and, okay, I'm fine with the settings, click OK. And now it's just going to adapt that floor to this topography that we have imported. And as you can see, uh, this is now complete and we have kind of adapted our uh, floor to this uh, to the surface above. So let me just show you how that looks in a section because I think that's where this is kind of uh, really, really impressive. So let me just cut a section through this, open that up. And of course we do have to make some small modifications uh, as I was showing you before for floors just here to turn off that interior edges. Okay, and here we go. So this now it looks really, really impressive. So see, as you can see, this is that uh, kind of uh, a, a file from a from uh, a road engineer from Civil 3D, and we have just adapted everything into Revit geometry and Revit components quite easily with just a few clicks. So I think it's a really good solution. Uh, as I said, if you want to uh, check out this uh, plugin, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. And if you want to get an extended free trial to it uh, and also get a whole site design and coordination in Revit course, well, that's all on my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the, the, the first link just below this video uh, in the description. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.